Ward was very good at using his jab to initiate the clinch, and how he would do that in this clip would be to jab and level change. Off of the jab, Green, without even knowing it, has been opened up because he's looking to punch. That's what Ward wants. He wants Green to open up his guard so he can get underneath and on the inside of it in order to get into the clinch. You'll see here again, he will use his jab, this time stepping up onto Green and then punching his way into a position of getting his arms on the inside. One more time, you'll see him use the jab in order to initiate the clinch. This is all very, very simple stuff from Ward. So this is gold because you'll see here, it looks like he's going to clinch, then he lands that uppercut. He kept green guessing that change of intensity and you'll see it here as I wheel it back he'll jab to the body he then steps inside the guard now he's in a prime position he acts passive he then lands that uppercut changes that intensity and green who was just happy to have a break because it was a mentally horrible night for him as well as physically he was being bullied and mauled he was just looking for a rest and Ward changes that intensity on him. He, he senses that he's resting and he lands. So in this, it looks like Green is in control, but he's not because watch what uh, Ward does. He allows him to use that energy to walk him back. And then he switches it up, changes his stance and his hip position. He's now back in the orthodox stance. He's got the leverage to push Green back. See how he digs that back foot into the canvas and pushes him back. And now he's got his lead leg on the inside of Green's stance. And now he's got him where he wants him. And from there, he's going to do damage. You'll see that Ward has his lead leg on the inside of the stance of Green. But he's also holding Green's left arm. Holding him in position and landing left hooks. But then he changes over. Now look at that left glove of Andre Ward. And how he's controlling the body and holding him in position. Holding Green in that position and keeping him there so that he can maul him. The hips have pushed back so that he's got enough leverage for his punches but he's still able to smother and then change the angles on the inside. Okay, so there's a few subtle things to note here. Watch how Ward jabs, gets himself into position. The head's on the outside, the right glove's on the outside. Little tap, opens him up. Now he's in the inside of his guard. He can push and maul him back with that right leg and that right glove, pushing him back onto the ropes and then he starts to work him over. Okay, so we've looked at the right glove and the head, but the same clip, but now look at the left glove of Andre Ward. It goes round the back, just like we saw earlier on the ropes. Now he's controlling him. He's using the right forearm to push, but he's also controlling with the left arm, holding him in position. So just look at Andre Ward's left leg. It's on the inside of Green, who's lazy in here. He's, it, he's lazy on the inside. He's not thinking about what he's doing. And Ward's able to walk him back. And he's in that stance to punch. He's got his hips in a good position. And he's able to push him back and control that clinch. All from a good, solid base. Whereas so many fighters, they will square up on the inside, square up in the pocket, square up in the clinch. And they get moved around. And then they wonder why. Okay, so in this clip you'll see how Ward jabs against Beaker this time. He's into the clinch. He steps up on him. He takes the left arm. He allows Beaker to work with the right. But look how he opens the glove to cover his temple and the side of his face and anyone that knows how Saki Obika fights knows that he needs leverage on his punches watch how Ward sticks to him like glue not allowing him to get that leverage sticking to him falling onto him closing that leverage and making it very difficult for Obika to get his punches off in the clinch and again keeping that left hand high but also controlling with the right arm And before I close this video out, I'm sure there will be some negativity because it is Andre Ward and I know not everyone was a fan of his style. But look guys, it is called Skills Pays Bills Boxing and Skills Pay the Bills in the Sport of Boxing. So 
for me, I'm looking at the craft, we're breaking down and analysing together and learning as a community, as fight fans and also as boxers, whether you be young or old, whatever level you're at. If you can, if you feel like this footage is a, is a benefit to you, that's the whole point of the page. And I'm more than happy to put stuff like this together if it's going to benefit someone. If you don't like his style and you're not interested, don't watch. You know, that's ultimately it's that simple. But for me, I felt it was a great learning curve to just see certain little subtle things he did. Um, and the clinch is a lost art. And I was going to put some Roberto Duran stuff in here, but it's already been done on various channels so I felt I'd leave it to them and look it would be great to do a Roberto Duran one but you know that's already been done I looked at Andre Ward and I thought actually there isn't a lot out there on how good he was on the inside and look some of his clinch work was key to him beating some top top fighters and how he worked on the inside little choppy punches to the midriff to the solar plex and round the sides sometimes body work doesn't always have to be long left hooks and uppercuts to the body sometimes it can be that sneaky stuff inside but that is it for 2020 for skills pays bills boxing i'll be hopefully back in 2021 please like share and subscribe and comment below and have a wonderful christmas and a happy new year god bless